Hey guys, it's Aaron Page coming to you from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into VA loans to learn about the ins and outs and what's required for living in beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho using your VA loan as a financing option. If you're a veteran looking to buy in North Idaho, this video is not only going to save you time, but it's going to save you money, and it's also going to save you stress through your home buying process. To start, let me be the first to welcome you to beautiful North Idaho. Coeur d'Alene and North all the way up to the Canadian border is one of the most beautiful places in the entire United States. With hundreds of lakes within 100 miles from Coeur d'Alene, the outdoors are plentiful, and there's as much recreation as you could possibly want if you're an avid outdoorsman or just someone who enjoys getting out in nature. Up here in Coeur d'Alene, it's a very tight-knit group of veterans, retired police officers, retired firemen, and people who are relocating from out of state, but they're coming up here for what Coeur d'Alene and North Idaho have to offer and what it brings to the table, and that's the respect of people, the freedom, and your constitutional rights in general. You'll quickly find the community in Coeur d'Alene will share your values and share your beliefs in how this world should be operating at this point. Now that I've told you a little bit about what to expect from Coeur d'Alene, let's hop in to the VA loan and what's going to be required from you in order to make this loan happen. To address the biggest piece in the room, a VA loan is no money down. As a thank you for your service, your commitment to the country, no money down out of pocket. Now, the next piece that comes into play with that is a funding fee. It's required by the VA. It's not a lender fee. It's actually a VA fee and is basically how it works is it works as a percentage. If you put 0% down and it's your first time using a VA loan and you're not exempt from the funding fee, it typically ranges at 33 to 3.6%. Now, to check if you're exempt for a funding fee, you need to get your certificate of eligibility and every veteran has the ability to pull that online if they choose to, but the process can kind of be overwhelming. The website honestly sucks and it's just really difficult to do. I, as a lender, have the ability to log in and pull this within minutes, so you're welcome to do it yourself if you feel like that's what you would like to do, but if you want an easier path, you can just reach out to me and I can tell you within a matter of minutes. Once we figure out if we're doing 0% down and you're exempt or you do have a funding fee, we can start talking about loan amounts. And one of the biggest pieces with that and the VA loan besides no money down is that there's no private mortgage insurance or PMI as it's referred to on a VA loan. This alone right here can save anywhere from $100 to probably $500 depending on the size of the loan that you're taking out. Here's another big piece that comes up all the time is VA loans and credit scores. So hear me when I say this, the VA technically does not have a credit score requirement in order to utilize a VA loan. However, lenders can set their own minimum credit score that they are willing to accept and typically they don't go below a 500. The reason for this is it's just simply risk-based. They aren't willing to risk their assets by extending a loan on a property for someone who has below a 500 credit score. It's just not in their portfolio to allow that. But again, the VA technically does not have a minimum score requirement if you can find a lender that does not have one as well. A VA loan typically brings better interest rates over conventional and even FHA. The VA loan is backed by the government and it is supported by the government and the rates typically reflect that. This is just a hypothetical, but in most cases on a VA loan, you can expect to see anywhere from a quarter of a point to maybe even as big as three quarters of an interest rate point less over conventional loans. I typically tell all of my clients, if you do have the ability to use a VA loan, you definitely wanna look at it. The only time it typically makes sense to go conventional is to leave your VA loan eligibility freed up and you're putting more than 20, maybe even 30% down on a conventional loan. That seems to be about the only time that it will pencil out and make sense. There are plenty of benefits to the VA loan, but to touch on the last point in this video that I wanted to make is flexible debt to income ratios. With programs like a conventional loan, your debt to income, which is your total debts plus the proposed monthly mortgage payment compared to your income, can't be over 50%. But on a VA loan with a strong credit score, maybe some reserves or some assets in the bank, I've actually completed some VA loans as high as 65% debt to income ratio. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not common, but it can be done if you're someone with an 800 credit score, maybe you have $50,000 in the bank and you're not pushing your limits as far as all of your other liabilities. I know debt to income ratio is a big thing, but if a majority 
of your debt to income ratio is going to be your current proposed housing payment, you have a lot more flexibility with automated underwriting guidelines to get an approval at a higher debt to income ratio if you don't have 15 credit cards, three auto loans, a travel trailer, student loans, and you're trying to buy a house to push to 65%. At that point, you would just look over leveraged and it would not work. We touched a little bit earlier on the certificate of eligibility and what's needed to obtain that. Like I said, you can do that yourself through the VA website, but it is a little bit time consuming, or you can reach out to someone like me or any lender you prefer, and they can pull it in a matter of minutes to let you know if you're exempt or non-exempt from the funding fee. Keep in mind the funding fee, no matter the percentage, can be financed into the loan. It's not a fee that you have to pay out of pocket, but either way, it is still a fee and it is worth noting that it can be sizable. If you're up at 3.6% on a $300,000 loan, that's an extra almost $10,000 in fees. The next piece I wanna to touch on is requirements for a VA loan and what would make you eligible. To talk about service requirements, if you served in the military during active wartime and you were active or deployed for over 90 days, you would be eligible for a VA loan. If it's during peacetime and we aren't technically at war, when you hit day 181 or six months in one day, you would be eligible if you have served active service, active duty during that time. For National Guard and Reserve members, and this comes up a lot, it's not the same requirements. You need to have six years of National Guard or Reserve service in order to qualify for a VA loan. A lot of National Guard and Reserve members are eligible because with everything that's happened in the last 25, 30 years, there were a lot of people deployed. So if you're in the Guard or the Reserves and you do get deployed for more than 90 days during wartime and you're serving on active duty, you are immediately eligible for a VA loan. The last one to touch on is if you're a surviving spouse. If unfortunately you lost your spouse during military time served, you also would be eligible as the surviving spouse benefit. Here's another big piece with a VA loan. It's reusable. So this isn't a one-time use or a use it or you lose it type thing. It's you use it now, but typically you can only have one VA loan at a time. And it all comes down to how much eligibility you have. There's a calculator that us lenders run in conjunction with the VA. And it tells us maybe your first home was only $150,000 starter home while you were active. And it was just something so you didn't have to live on base. There's a really good chance if you're going to try and find another, say, $300,000 or $400,000 home that you would have enough eligibility remaining to actually get a second VA loan. Now, that's not very common, but it is possible. So if you're in that situation, it's worth asking about. When it comes to VA loans, lenders, brokers, credit unions, and banks are all different. So I want to tell you what sets me apart as a mortgage broker when it comes to VA loans and how it can directly impact you and your home. I'm a mortgage broker. I'm not a bank, so I'm not like U.S. Bank or Bank of America where you walk in through the front door, you're greeted by a teller. Um, there's not that much overhead where I'm at. I'm a mortgage broker. We're all independent, self-employed employees, and we do home loans. As a mortgage broker, I have access with Barrett Financial to over 150 different lenders, and almost all of them do VA. And the reason that this is important is because if you go to a bank, let's say you just walk into ABC Bank, I won't call anyone out directly, but you go to ABC Bank, you sit down with someone and say, I would like to obtain a VA loan, what do I need to do? You go through the qualification process and they say you're pre-approved. You start talking about interest rates and maybe debt to income ratio and asking those questions. Banks typically only have one lane that they operate in and it's their VA portfolio at an interest rate of X and an overlay of X and that is what it is. So imagine you're in LA traffic and there's only one lane, that's ABC Bank. Now you talk to someone like me with 150 lenders that I'm connected with. I'm on a 150 lane highway compared to ABC Bank on a one lane highway, and I can shop all of them at the exact same time, which is going to directly impact you as far as better interest rates, lower fees, and we stick with a lender that doesn't have a lot of overlays who's not going to nitpick you for paperwork. The second part about me is I've been a mortgage broker for over 10 years. I've been in the lending industry for 14 years, so I know the VA loans in and out. I know how they work, and I used to do them all the time when I lived in Oregon, which made me one of the VA loan number one producer. And now, that was before I relocated to North Idaho, but the information is still there. I still got it up here in the steel trap. 
with other veterans that I've worked with in the past, which is quite a few, the thing that they've appreciated the most about how I operate is I'm very low pressure. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to call you nonstop and bug you and say, hey, where are we at? Are you looking for a house? Are you shopping around? I'm not doing anything like that. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to answer your questions. When you're ready, we go at your pace and your speed, and we're here to help you every single step of the way to make sure that this process isn't overwhelming. And it's a process that for all intents and purposes, you can enjoy as much as you can enjoy taking on a 30-year debt. Before we go and sign off this video, I just want to address three misconceptions with VA loans and what can typically come from those and why sellers may be hesitant to accept a VA offer. The first stigma is this, they take longer to close. They really don't. They take no longer than any other loan if you're working with the right team, the right lender or broker like myself. We typically see these close anywhere from 25 to 35 days and most of that is simply dependent on the appraisal. The appraisal is done by a VA certified appraiser and sometimes there's only a few of them. Like in Coeur d'Alene, for example, I believe there's four to six appraisers. And if there's a lot of demand, they can get backed up and sometimes an appraisal will take two weeks to get back to us and then underwriting has to review, et cetera. And it can just delay us to maybe a bit past 30 days, but we always see them close in under 35 days on a purchase. The second myth, sellers don't like VA loans because the appraisal is harder to pass. While it is true, a VA loan appraisal is more stringent and strict than a conventional loan, sellers in North Idaho typically don't care because, like I mentioned in the very beginning, we're a very veteran, retired police, retired firemen, retired service duty in general community. So people are actually up here are more inclined to accept a VA loan from what I've seen over anywhere else in the country. The third one is that a VA loan, the process is more complicated. And like I've stated a few times, it's just simply not. If you have the right team, you have the right setup, and everything's been explained to you up front, then at that point, it's actually quite simple to get all of this done. So to take all this away, here would be the three action items that you could take to prepare yourself right now for a VA home purchase as soon as you're ready for it. Number one would be gather your DD-214 if you have it. If you don't have it, that's okay. We can help with that too. But if you have it on hand, that's going to be a really big step for us as far as the lending process goes. Number two is to think about your buying timeline. If you're just browsing and you may or may not want to buy sometime between six months and six years, you just need to make sure when you go to talk to a lender that they don't go and pull your credit. Once we pull credit, the report is good for 90 days. So someone like me, I can do a soft check if you don't know where your credit score falls. We can get a pretty good idea just like Credit Karma or your credit card. Those are all soft checks. I have the ability to do that as well. But when you're ready to purchase, we need to do a hard pull and it's good for 90 days. So knowing your timeline is extremely helpful in this scenario. The third step, I wouldn't be a mortgage broker if I didn't tell you to reach out to me. It's something I've done forever. This is going to be my career. My business is built on veterans and conventional loans and FHA loans. Those are the three that I do the most and I know them in and out. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly anytime, day or night. I tell everybody this, I'm available at 208-219-1988, seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Outside of those times after 7 p.m., I am married and I have three daughters, so I do take some time with them, but seven days a week, you can reach me for 12 hours a day anytime you need to with any questions, even if it's the weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching this. There's plenty of details down in the description to how to get to my website with calculators and all of my social media channels with even more information on TikTok, Instagram, and of course here on YouTube. And like I said earlier, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.